So, uh, this welcome to the session. Uh, this is uh, a session that is. Ex I'm going to let Yannick explain in detail what it's all about, but it, fundamentally, it's about SEO. Um, Yannick has been involved in Joomla since the very, very beginning. And since 2011, I think he's been a full time Joomla extension developer. Uh, before that, he was still chopping down trees, uh, if I remember rightly. Um, yep. <laughs> you will tell from his accent, he is French. Um, he speaks English as well as I speak French. No, he speaks fluent English. And, yeah, we can clear uh, that. Yeah. And I'm yeah. just going to uh, pass it straight over to him in a second. Just want to remind everyone um, that uh, all our sponsors uh, make this event happen. Uh, without them, uh, we wouldn't be here. So if you get a chance, uh, visit them in the exhibition hall or go to the website and uh, all their links are there and follow through on that. Um, and if you have any questions at all for Yannick at any time, uh, use the questions button at the bottom, uh, the Q&A button, type it in there. And at the end of the presentation, I will pass uh, all the questions over to Yannick for him to answer at the end of the session. Right, uh, Yannick, over to you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah, so it was uh, uh, 2009, actually, the end of 2009, that I became like a professional developer. And before that, I may not have, I may not have been actually chopping trees, but I was building factories that would you know, cut them into boards. So it's, yeah, it's about that. But people, sometimes when I say that, they picture me in the woods with a with an ax and that sort of thing. So it's not exactly what I was, what I was doing. Okay, thanks for, uh, thanks uh, everyone for joining. I'm going to try and do the usual uh, customary screen share. Uh, and I should try to, and see the same thing. So uh, again, welcome. Um, this is like, as Brian said, this is a, a, a talk about SEO, search engine optimizations, for those who uh, don't know about that. Uh, but it's such a vast, vast field that um, I, uh, I'm going to restrict myself to uh, what it takes to do SEO in 2022. That is more about the things that changed uh, in, uh, in recent times in the, in the world of SEO. Um, um, so um, just a word about me, I, uh, after I stopped chopping down trees, I started uh, Weblur.com where uh, we do uh, extensions, Joomla extensions. Uh, the most, uh, probably the most uh, well-known one is SH4 for Ceph, um, which was uh, started in Membo actually as a, as a Membo extension and then uh, turned over to Joomla in 2005. Uh, I have dedicated myself to only building Joomla SEO extensions uh, and also content extensions that will be uh, AMP. And uh, we have now a full brand, uh, a full range of new extensions for SEO, for Ceph, for video, for logs. Some of them are paid, some of them are free, and I'll probably mention them uh, later on. Uh, we also have a, a Chrome or Firefox SEO extension called SEO Info. Uh, which I um, very much recommend to you. It's free. You can install that on your browser and it will tell you a whole lot of things about each page on your site, uh, uh, SEO information, and will also run uh, SEO checks uh, on, on each page. Uh, very useful information. Okay, so um, let's get started. So what does it take? Like I said before, um, it's a really uh, vast field, search engine optimization, and it's always changing. Uh, although at the same time there are things that are very uh, that are um, that stay the same in many aspects, so uh, I have decided to to focus on five different uh, five specific topics, which uh, undergo which have undergone um, changes uh, in the last uh, few months or, or year or so, and these topics I think you you need to pay attention to uh, today. Um, with like with any list of five five best something uh, list, uh, there'll be a, a fix element, which is a, a like bonus tips. And let's get started. So the, the first, first thing I'd like to, to talk about is um, 
uh, content. Uh, anyone who's been uh, in the SEO field would say or, or has heard content is king, uh, which is supposed to mean that content is the most important thing, but uh, it's really hard to know uh, what does that mean? Content is king, content is the most important thing. Um, so in my mind, in the recent years, um, what has changed is that content uh, has turned, has evolved into, or the requirements for content has has evolved into uh, writing in a more and more natural way. Uh, a few years back, uh, a common SEO process was to uh, search for keywords that you would like to to rank for. Uh, rather gather all the variations of them, all the synonyms, uh, related words, and then try to fit as many as you could in a single page and maybe uh, on the page title and, and everywhere you could. And that led to a very uh, unnatural, unpleasant way to, to read. And it was obviously written for SEO, but uh, the way search engines are working um, these days is that they are more and more able to uh, work around that. You don't need to stuff keywords. And actually it's it's become a very negative factor. So natural writing is, a, is, is, is the way to go uh, each year more and more. You want to write for your visitors, but it, it's true. You don't want to uh, stuff things with synonyms. Uh, a big, a big uh, thing that that um, made that more important uh, in recent years is that artific artificial intelligence is now used to understand uh, search requests. It means that when you search for dogs, uh, and maybe you have a, a how to breed dogs, for instance, um, uh, machine learning is used by big by Bing and Google to understand what you actually mean. And so they are the ones who are going to search for synonyms and related words matching. Uh, they are going to um, maybe show you pages that the, don't actually have the word dogs, but may have the word Labrador or any kind of, of dog. I don't, I'm not familiar with the, the dog naming in uh, all species uh, exactly. Uh, so the point is that it's not something yet that you need to do. And if you keep uh, stuffing keywords, various keywords on the same page, making up for a, an unnatural, unnatural reading, then um, you're probably uh, um, um, hurting yourself and hurting your visitors, which is also hurting yourself. Um, so the key, the key thing is, and I would like to the point I'd like to make is that when can you when when should you use related words? You should basically never use related words for SEO purpose because Google, uh, what Google must do is understand your page intent, what you're talking about. Um, and that's done very naturally now. Uh, on a page about on the left, you have a page which have the words, which has the the words dogs, pug, poodle. I assume these are uh, dog species. I don't know, Labrador. And from that, Google can infer this is a page about dogs, dogs only, most or dogs most uh, specifically. While the page on the right um, has also the word dogs, but on the same page, you've got cats, you've got kittens, you've got whiskers. So this is not about a page about dogs. And so this is something they can do on their own. And it means you, you're not, you're unlikely, you're likely to deserve to, to do a bad service to you if you're fitting, you know, stuffing keywords into a page. So write more naturally. Okay. So the second thing that's really, really, really evolved in recent years is video content. And maybe this has to do uh, with the pandemic and everybody uh, consuming more and more video. Uh, but uh, video is attractive to many kind of visitors. And uh, so it, it comes naturally that you probably want, if, if suitable for your, uh, for your website, for the, the, the activity you have, that you want to include uh, video in your content on your pages. Um, so video are attractive, but the thing is, in terms of SEO, Google must be able to understand what the video is about so that it can show it to uh, searchers. And the way to do that, there are, there are uh, three things that matter, so three things you can do. Uh, the, most, the, like, the, the, the most likely, the most useful thing you can do is probably to use structured data. And I'll, go, I'll get back to structured data later because this is really uh, what you should do today. Uh, using text transcript, that is when you have a video that speaks, talks about something, then you also want to include the text of that video, either in structured data that's possible or just as plain text uh, below the video. 
And there's a small thing as well. Um, you need to pay attention to how technically the video is embedded in your content because it can trigger very easily a Core Web Vitals uh, CLS issue. It means, uh, for those unfamiliar, it means that the way or the speed at which the page is displayed may not be as fast as best practice uh, required. So I have a, a shameless uh, plug here. Uh, if you want to embed video from YouTube or Vimeo, you can use our free uh, four video uh, module, which is free, which has uh, structured data built in, uh, can display a table of content and is 100% uh, Core Web Vitals uh, compatible. Um, I have also put a link at the bottom, uh, weblog.com slash SEO slash 69, and that will take you to a, an episode of uh, Search of the Record, which is a podcast by Googlers um, that will tell you about everything about video uh, as, as Google use it. Uh, and they especially mention that how much they like structured data uh, when, user, uh, when using video, uh, which takes us to the next, um, the next uh, uh, topic here, which is structured data. And structured data basically comes off the fact that Google is very smart, but it's just not that smart uh, yet, at least. Um, there's another search of the record podcast uh, that was published earlier this month, which is dedicated to uh, using structured data in, in SEO. And the link is, you have it at the bottom. It's a redirect to the actual uh, podcast episode. It's called, it's at uh, weblo.com slash SEO slash 68. And uh, they explained that they wanted to understand everything, um, uh, basically every page on the web using machine learning, you know, intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence. And they tried that for, for quite some time and they got nowhere because it was just too hard, too, too, too much variety uh, on the web and the page content and so on. So they figured that it was better for them to ask um, uh, content authors to add machine specific instructions and details about what was the actual page content um, because uh, Google is not able to understand all of it by itself. So it's better to ask people just to add information about the page content. Uh, that helps Google understand uh, the content, what the page is about. Uh, of course, people are going to spam that. They're going to say, oh, my page is about something, but it's actually about something else. Or they're going to say, uh, this product has a five stars rating, uh, while in fact, there's, it's totally made up. But they, they say in that podcast that it's actually easier to remove the spam, to filter out this in, in, incorrect information, um, because overall, it's more efficient. Um, uh, another, another big advantage of uh, using structured data in your content is that it will help you access what's called rich snippets. And uh, rich snippets, and there are many variations of that, uh, are specific um, uh, search engine results uh, features like uh, top stories or uh, sidebars with uh, what's called knowledge graph information, uh, details about somebody, all of that sort, or uh, maybe, uh, yeah, they also uh, frequently ask questions, for instance, uh, having uh, uh, structured data information embedded in your in, in your website uh, can help trigger these special special features uh, for your site, website page, and uh, this will of course take you up, give you much more visibility in the in the search results. Um, so how do you do that? Well, um, uh, Entering or having structured data in your website is something that needs to be automated. It's it's it can always be done manually. You can uh, build up the. Um, I'll show you what it looks like uh, on the next slide. But it can always be done manually. But it's really really time consuming and error prone. Uh, so it's better done with extensions such as R for SEO, and there are other uh, on the market. The, the JSON LD format for these structural data is definitely the preferred one. So that's what you want to use. It's also the, the easiest to, to use. Uh, and the key point with, uh, with structured data, aside from having structured data, is that you validate it uh, because it's only used for any, it, it only has any use if it's valid, if it follows the specifications and all of that. So there are tools to validate that and you need to apply them. 
our SEO info uh, extension, which you can see uh, a sample here uh, on this page, on this slide, is uh, uh, will do that for you. It will show you, you know, the structured data uh, embedded into any page, and it will help you validate that with a click. Uh, this is an example that's taken from the page of our website for, for, for SEO, where we have a small video, a getting starting guide, getting getting started guide. And this is a sample. No, it's not a sample. It's, it's real world um, structured data embedded in the site. And you've got information such, such as this is a there's a video object on that page. I'm not sure you can actually see that, but I hope so. Uh, there's a video object on that page. Uh, there's an, this video object has a name and there's a description, which is actually too short. I should make it much longer. When was it uploaded? The thumbnail, URL, and so on. And there's also even um, uh, some specific chapters that are described here uh, in the structure data. And that will help tremendously search engines. And this is the kind of results you can get from that. I, um, I wrote a, a simple query. I'm asking for a getting started for SEO getting started guide. And you've got all the regular results at the bottom here. But because it's a getting started guide, uh, they know um, uh, video is a useful. Many people are searching for videos when trying to get started into something. And so, well, my video is right here at, in the first spot and it gets a uh, um, uh, very good visibility. Uh, due to, and I get a very good visibility due to that. So that's. Uh, so that's uh, content and video. Now, uh, let's move on to the next topic, which is um, something that's often overlooked, and it's uh, internal linking. So I've spoken about content, what the actual content of your page, but another extremely important factor uh, in how search engines are going to evaluate the value of your content of your pages is how you link them together. Um, so to be clear, this is not about backlink, what's called backlinks. Backlinks is when other people on other sites are linking to your page, to your site. And that's, that's a major factor, probably more important than internal linking. But uh, you, can have a, uh, you can have a strong effect on, on the authority of your site by correctly linking pages inside your site. Uh, there, there was uh, recently a very good um, uh, newsletter episode uh, called Internal Linking the SEO Superpower by Barry Adams at polemicdigital.com. Uh, he's a fairly, Barry is a fairly famous uh, SEO and he runs that uh, SEO newsletter dedicated to mostly to news websites. So it's a bit specific, but he, he's got a few, uh, a whole article on that topic. And here is... Uh, what he suggests to do and, and have, uh, has uh, experience with pretty good results. So internal linking are the, the links between your pages and it helps search engines understand the importance of each page relative to each other. So one way to, to make use of that is to build what's called topic pages. So uh, I build a made up experience, um, sample here where I, I want to have a page that's really authoritative and have a good value on the topic of Joomla CMS. And, and the way it can, be, it can be done, the content of your site can be organized is that um, you write pages which are talking about something related to Joomla, build a website with Joomla, uh, with Joom related to Joomla or something similar to Joomla because uh, build a website with Joomla or I can uh, build a Joomla blog in five minutes. Uh, I could have uh, five tips for Joomla SEO, but I could also have an article on the top three open source CMS in 2022, which is some, you know, still uh, something about Joomla CSS. And the key point is that to reinforce and all these pages are linked from that topic page, but all these sub pages are linking to the topic page. So it's like they are sending strength, if you will, to the main Joomla CMS page uh, right here. And um, uh, how do you do that? The first thing that it, it's not something that's going to work uh, overnight. You must be, it's something you do, you do uh, on the long run or like months and years. You have to publish, uh, you have to publish um, these pages more and more like on a regular basis, every two weeks, every, every month, I don't know, but on a regular basis, long term. Uh, you need to have quite a few of them. Uh, it's not like the example I have with five pages, not 
it's not going to have much effect. It's something you you end up, again uh, with time. You have to have uh, many articles. Uh, you need to link uh, the topic name in our case Joomla CMS, CM, uh, Joomla CMS back to the main page, and you ha you want to do that once only. Of course, I would advise that it's automated. Otherwise, you're going to forget. You're going to do things incorrectly. Uh, and um, actually, for the, um, it's a little story, but that's the exact reason why uh, for SEO, we added a content replacer in it. And this is how it works. It's really simple. Um, I write pages, content, new articles, uh, and I, I instruct for SEO to replace the word Joomla with a link to my topic page, which uh, fictitiously here is uh, has this URL replaced by with a link. Um, and I want it to be replaced only in the main content, not on the sidebars or just every uh, instance of uh, the world Joomla. And I want only one replacement at, the, at most uh, to be replaced with the link to the, my, my main page, my topic page. And probably you also want to restrict that. Uh, you don't want this replacement to happen on your About Me page or, or anywhere. It has to be content related to uh, the Joomla CMS to have any weight, any value. So uh, you can also restrict the rule to only the some content or some specific uh, categories of content. And that's, uh, if you do it this way, then it's, it's probably something that's going to, uh, over time, bring, uh, uh, bring a lot of value to, to what you are doing and push those, those um, uh, topic pages. Okay, uh, I think that's pretty much it for content. So now we're going to switch to something that uh, many people uh, are familiar with, or maybe more familiar with, and that's sitemaps. Uh, so I'll, I'll, there are many types of sitemaps. Uh, I'll, I'll mention the other types, but for now I'm going to focus on the XML uh, sitemaps. Uh, and X, uh, the XML sitemaps is, is, is a file uh, or a page that lists some of the sites of, of your site pages. Uh, one thing uh, worth mentioning is that in many cases, I should have put these two lines uh, the other way around. Uh, the, the goal here is to help search engines um, identify the important pages on your website. And to be honest, it's not something they do for you. It's something they do mostly for them. Uh, they don't want to waste time um, crawling and 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 uh, trying to understand pages who who are, who are which are duplicates of others, or which are not canonical, who we, uh, who are actually totally uh, unimportant, like a content page, uh, contact us or, or some about us pages, those things, uh, things like that. Uh, which is one of the reason why uh, it's worth reminding that uh, sitemaps are not a ranking factor. It's not something that will help you ranking above your competition. Um, another thing worth mentioning again is that uh, you may not use a sitemap at all uh, because one of the main goals of a sitemap, like I said, is to uh, save time for search engines, basically, even if, they, if they, even if they don't put it that way. They don't want to crawl useless pages. But if your site is too small, is really small, like they mention in the documentation less than 500 pages, you've got the link at the bottom. Um, you don't. They they say to themselves. You don't need a. You don't need a, a sitemap. We are going to crawl all the pages on your site anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we can sort out everything. And for small sites, five hundred. And if you listen to them on podcast, they are going to say it's more like two thousand or three thousand pages. Uh, but assuming you have, um, you have that sort of website, uh, then a sitemap can be extremely useful. Um, you can also use them on new sites because it's been said that uh, if you build a new, uh, you have an entirely new site and you list, uh, you build a sitemap, you submit that sitemap, uh, Google will come faster and they will index uh, your pages uh, faster. It's, uh, it's not my experience. It's, it's really, uh, really, really fast, even without a sitemap. Um, but the, so the, the, the more important points here is uh, that the sitemap should include only important pages. Obviously, the canonical ones, you don't want to, if you have five URLs to the same page, you're not going to include, you should definitely not include these pages because the point, again, is to avoid them uh, wasting time on unimportant pages. Uh, 
Uh, you should as well exclude contact things like contact pages, login, du everything duplicated, everything that's redirected, everything that's blocked by uh, robots.txt, uh, everything that's uh, that has a no index uh, meta tag. Um, maybe tags. Uh, may, it depends on how you, you use tags. For instance, tags could can be used to build uh, what I mentioned earlier, topic pages for internal linking. So in that case, you definitely want them to be in your sitemap. But sometimes tags are just um, like a, a diversion, something that really has no importance. So in that case, you don't want to include tags in your sitemaps. Uh, and something I, I consider important as well, you should uh, remove pages from your sitemap after a while, uh, at least uh, if it becomes outdated, some content is like, it's called evergreen. It's always relevant. Um, but some content be can become outdated. I would, uh, in that case, uh, the, the general consensus is that you should leave it on your site so that it's still available and because me, people may search for it and appreciate finding it even after a while. But you should remove it uh, from your sitemap. This is a hint to Google that uh, they should not spend, this content is not going to change. There's no no point in coming back and trying to fetch it and, and analyze it uh, again. So, and, and the reason I'm mentioning this in, this in 2022 is because um, Google, for various reasons, including uh, just the cost of energy and the cost of crawling and the, just the increasing, increasing size of the web, uh, they are more and more cautious about which pages they crawl, they analyze, they take into account, and which pages these pages they they just discard without even looking at them. So, uh, a proper sitemap with 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 only the right pages is a very important help uh, for for you to tell Google spend time on these pages and not on these ones. Okay, uh, I'll go very briefly through um, uh, the other uh, sitemap tabs, uh, types that exist. Um, uh, the, probably the most well-known is the HTML sitemap. And the HTML sitemap is when uh, you have a page on your site visible to users where you have sort of a map of all the pages on your site, or at least the top level pages. And, and it's meant for users to find their way uh, through through your website. Uh, to be clear, this has no benef SEO benefits at all. It's, it's just a regular, those are just regular links. So uh, you can have that. Uh, there's definitely no SEO benefit to it. If you consider it's useful to your users, why not? I really would say, would say, would say um, if you find that useful and, and your users get lost and need this help to, um, to find that way in your website, maybe you have to reconsider your website navigation, or maybe you have to improve your search. And for, well, Joomla 4 uh, will be a good help there because the, um, um, the finder, the new search experience here is probably much better than what it was on, on Joomla 3. Uh, another type of sitemaps, which is really specific is the news sitemaps. It's a uh, sitemap which is used by uh, websites producing news in, in, in that are, uh, a part of the Google News project. Uh, so these are very specific because they need to have, uh, pages need to be listed there uh, when they are really fresh. Like you have like two days, uh, like normally after two days, you would remove them or at most 30 days. Um, so it's very specific. Very few websites are actually present in, in Google News and it's really difficult to, to get there, but that might be the case. Um, images, sitemaps uh, can be, uh, really useful, uh, even on very small site. That's one of the exceptions. That's one of the times where, or the occasions where you can have a, a, a sitemap, even if your site has only 200 pages, 100 pages. And the reason is that many, also oh, a sitemap is a list of images on your website. And it has the same goal. It has the, the goal is to help search engines find the important images on the website, the, one, the ones you want uh, them to rank you for. And the problem with many websites is that images are sometimes, especially those which are image heavy, uh, these images are, are, are included in your pages with uh, galleries components or modules or JavaScript slideshows and things like that. And when you do that, um, the 
sometimes, not all of them, not all of them, but sometimes it's only a thumbnail that's uh, included into the page itself. And, and the, uh, the, real, the full size image or the real image is only included with JavaScript later on. And although um, search engines can execute some JavaScript, they cannot click buttons. So um, sometimes they won't be able to access the other page, the other images on a single page, for instance. So that's a, that's tricky, and that's one of the cases where having a an image uh, sitemaps can be a good help there because it will tell search engines, okay, we have this image and this image and this image and this image. You were not able to maybe to find them yourself, but they are there. Okay, um, video sitemaps. It's uh, it doesn't have the same uh, in my mind. It doesn't have the same utility as uh, images sitemaps because video sitemaps are better. Or videos are better sort by structured data, so you're better off probably using structured data. Uh, hreflang can uh, that is something used in mul on multilingual multilingual sites to re to to associate pages in different for the same content in different languages uh it's but it's possible to put the hreflang tags in the sitemap but i would say don't bother with that uh the joomla native multilingual system handles that perfectly and there's really nothing to do and lastly i would like to mention two things that either do not exist or ne uh, anymore or never existed that's the, the geo sitemaps localization sitemaps it was dropped in uh, 2012 and you should use structured data instead to geolocate uh, whatever service or business your your or products or whatever you are you're doing or events you are doing and the amp sitemaps which never just never existed because the amp pages are not canonical so you should never list them um, in a sitemap okay uh, let me let me just check the time yeah Okay, so um, the last part here is metadata, and that's also well known for uh, quite a few people uh, from for, from a few, quite a few people. Um, page title, meta description is something that most people are actually uh, working on from the start. When many, for many people, um, SEO equals filling in page title and meta description. So it's not definitely not that. Uh, but there has been a few changes uh, in uh, last year. Um, first, talking about page title, there was a big change in 2021 and its title rewrite. Um, there was a, I'm not sure I'm mentioning it here, but um, there was um, um, SEOs around the world started to notice that um, the page title they were putting on their website uh, were not used at all by Google. So they, it appears they started last year to uh, rewrite title entirely. Uh, it's it's always been the case that they would slightly uh, shorten or alter page titles when displaying them in the uh, in the page uh, in the in the search results. But now uh, they started um, doing that entirely and just changing the title. For instance, replacing your page title uh, with whatever they find in the H1. Uh, tag or in H2 or just some random text on the page. Uh, an important thing to note is that it's not something that depends on what the people are searching for. It's something they do once. They, they find a page, they think they see, look at your title, they think it's not good enough, and they change it. Uh, it's been said that it's really um, uh, it's really a good thing because most people have uh, very bad titles, but still it's something to to be aware of. And it's something you want to decide. It's, you you can you can include in your uh, decision as to uh, how much time you're going to spend uh, writing titles manually. Uh, just for a measure, um, it's been found that about sixty percent of all page titles in search results are modified, either truncated, just shortened. Uh, sometimes they added a few words, and or they just entirely uh, modify them, which is. Uh, uh, something that led uh, a company called Moz.com, a, fairly, a fairly well-known uh, company, SEO company, to try study what was if there was a pattern triggering these title rewrite. And they, what they found is there were three patterns in titles that would trigger a full rewrite by Google. Google will 
I entirely change the page title. The first one is keyword stuffing. I have uh, an example here, uh, which is not unusual, where you got bicycles, off-road bicycles, and you want to tell uh, people in search engines that you do sales and repairs. So you got bicycle sales, bicycle repairs, and you want to know that it's you, Bob, uh, doing this work. So you you put back bicycles here. And this is typically the kind of thing that will trigger a, a rewrite because that doesn't make sense. It doesn't bring value to users when they see that. Uh, the second pattern that was found to trigger a title rewrite is uh, what they call a superlative, click, and what I call clickbait. When you write something like uh, the absolute best off-road bicycles for everyone, um, it can't be. It can't be true. So in a way, and so they basically get rid of that and rewrite the title to something else they they feel is more representative of what's in the page. And the last pattern, which is a bit more worrying for me, is that when you have a page title that reproduces your site architecture. So for instance, here in Bob, uh, we are on Bob uh, Bob's bicycle shop, and it's doing bicycles and it sells off-road bicycles. And you've got we've got this particular model of bikes that they are selling. And so this is the item they are selling. This is the category, this or the subcategory, and this is the category, and this is the route. And it's been found that they probably maybe it's considered keyword stuffing or or just boring. And it's been found that they actually rewrite these titles. It's it's a it's a pattern, a way of writing titles that trigger a rewrite. So that's very recent. This happened uh, during basically the second part of last year, since uh, the second part of last year. Uh, okay, now about the same for uh, meta description. So meta description, I would like to restate here that meta description is not used for ranking content. So it's not something they take into account at all. No search engines use that. It's only used here in the search results to be written here. As a uh, as a description of what's in the page, um, there's been a lot of study on that over the last year and the, and the year before because they they started so SEOs again started realizing that uh, what they were writing as a meta description was just not being used. So they, they companies like Portent there's a there's a, a link to a study here. Uh, they started to try measure uh, how often Google would ignore. Uh, the description they were they put together, and um, well, your description is going to be used maybe at most thirty or forty percent of times. Uh, so again, you have to balance the the time you spend uh, against uh, the expected results, which is in terms of SEO, it's probably really low here. Okay, I'm going to speed up probably a little bit. Um, finally, I would like to point out that amongst the um, um, meta um, the metadata you can put on your page. Maybe a very important one is uh, the one meant for social networks. Social networks uh, like Facebook, Insta, Instagram, YouTube, and so on, they use, uh, yeah, they use uh, what's called open graph tags, OGP, um, to, they don't really analyze the page like uh, Bing or Google would do. They rely on metadata called open graph um, uh, tags. And if your website uh, uh, is suitable to be shared, its content is suitable to be shared and the people, the audience you want to talk to is suitable to, is found on social networks, then that's probably one thing you want to focus on. Uh, there's only one thing that really matters with uh, open graph tags and that's finding the right image, the best image on the page. And you want to automate that as much as possible because it's really tedious to do otherwise. Um, so that's, again, that's being done by extensions. Uh, but I believe for most small sites, it's actually the, the most important uh, metadata to have, especially the good image. Uh, just a word of passing remark. Uh, you probably want to stop using native sharing buttons, the one from Facebook and Google and Twitter and so on, uh, because they are slow and they track people and you need to do a lot of things to have them with uh, the GDPR and so on. So uh, that's a passing remark. Okay, so we've, we're done with the five topics. Um, I have a few bonus tips here. And the first one um, is from my personal experience. And I've just had it recently because I, I, I've um, had some bad experience with, with people I was uh, dealing with. Um, so it's usually better to do nothing than do wrong. 
uh, writing good page titles and description is really hard. And with as we've seen, it's not uh, always used. Um, some people are think they understand uh, what canonical tags are, but often they don't. Um, same for redirects. Same for sitemap or messing up with robot with robots.txt. And I would I would think really that um, uh, sometimes again it's it's better to do nothing and just leave it to Google or Bing and maybe concentrate on what you control, the, the content you write, and 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 the, and what sort of value you add to you you bring to your visitors, than uh, trying to fiddle with SEO techniques that uh, maybe you, you you're not uh, controlling properly. Uh, the second tip I have is something that's often uh, overviewed uh, is that you you should probably need uh, you should probably focus more on your homepage because your homepage is the probably the page on your site that's going to get the most backlinks when when people are mentioning you or maybe like even if you look at this very uh, conference uh, speakers page or, or all of that what's um, or if somebody is talking, uh, is talking or discussing a blog post you have or a product page you have, most of the times they are not going to link to the actual uh, product page or or the uh, specific page you, you you've been putting out. They're going just to make a link to your homepage. So it's it's probably the page that has the most authority on your site. And on many sites I see, the homepage is very simplified. Sometimes, for instance, there are just a few, like a slideshow with, with a few pictures, which have absolutely no value from an SEO standpoint. So I would uh, encourage you to put uh, actual and real content and make that page fast, because again, it's probably the most powerful uh, SEO page uh, or page uh, on your site from an SEO standpoint. Uh, to, yeah, a couple of things more. Uh, these are not ranking factors, and that has not changed. It's not something new, so it's not specific to 2022, but um, I'll just put it up there. There's a link to a uh, search engine journals article that, that uh, gives you more details about that. Uh, Weber.com slash SEO slash 67. Um, the number of words on a page or uh, anything related to Google Analytics, really, all the stories you hear, AMP, XML sitemaps and social signals, all of these are not ranking factors. Just, just don't waste your time on, on these, at least not for SEO purposes. Uh, another thing I'd like to talk about, because over the last two years, it's been uh, uh, on the top of the SEO news, is Core Web Vitals. Core Web Vitals is a new way uh, Google introduced uh, last year, well, a couple of years ago, but it was really uh, deployed last year. And it's the, the new way they measure speed. And it was said that um, this, um, this, uh, this score is used for ranking, which is true. And so many people have jumped on the bandwagon. They, they are they're spending a lot of time and a lot of effort trying to make their speed, their, their site faster and get a 100% uh, ratings on everything. Uh, it's not important from an SEO standpoint. It's a very, very, very tiny uh, factor, a tiebreaker or just a little bit above a tiebreaker when you have two pages which are really the same uh, quality and content, the one which is faster may maybe it may have the edge and, and come on top. So it's important to have a fast website uh, for, for SEO and for your visitors. Uh, just don't lose sleep on that and and don't spend you know uh, all of your resources on make your on making your website faster because it's not going to take you you know to, to get you over your competition. Uh, there are a few sectors uh, where this can be true, uh, but uh, maybe you're not running Joomla if you're in these sectors. Okay, one. No, I have even more. So <clears throat> uh, I would like to say a word about AMP accelerated mobile pages. Um, it's not anymore. It's it's something that Google promoted uh, strongly over the last five years or so. Yeah, about five years. Um, it's a good way to pass Core Web Vitals test, even though that's not really important, as I said before. Uh, I I just want to mention that it's I, I consider it likely on its way out, and it's actually replaced by Core Web Vitals as a way to incentivize people to have fast websites. So. Again, probably don't, not something you want to spend too much effort on. 
um, quickly, there's a, you've got a you've got a link at the bottom. Uh, Ahrefs Free is a good uh, free tool to identify SEO issues, and the one I mentioned earlier, like duplicate pages and and missing metadata and that sort of thing. Um, just pay attention to the fact that it's useful, but it does exaggerate enormously all the problems found on your site. So it can you can you can pick up some information, useful information there. Uh, but they tend to exaggerate all the problems uh, because basically they want to they want you to upgrade to their paid uh, paid products to solve these problems. So don't worry too much. But it's it's so useful. Um, and last uh, tip: um, if you're interested in the matter, you can stay in the loop of what's happening in the SEO world by uh, following these people on Twitter or these uh, couple of YouTube channels or podcasts. Uh, these are really from the from the source reliable, uh, for either from Google or reliable people uh, doing SEO uh, day by day. But um, they will uh, tell you really what's happening as it's happening. So that's probably where you want to start. And I'm done. So I'm not sure how this works now. Let me. Uh, and share. And Brian, if you have any, uh, if you have any question for me, or uh, you can actually. Yes, there are a lot of questions actually. On the oh, Q&A. okay. Uh, um, a, a I don't, we don't hear Brian. I don't know if you're mute. I, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. We can hear him. So, um, okay. One first question. I, I hear somebody. Use... I actually hear somebody talking. Olivier, I can actually okay. hear somebody talking. So I'm not sure who's talking. I, 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 I love hearing you. Yeah. No, no, it's somebody behind me. So, um, oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Very, about that. Can you look at the, the uh, Q&A? So I don't have yes, my I am. microphone on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, Let uh, so I can go through that. Um, Hugh Cole, can you use for video with other video sources such as Wistia? Uh, not yet. I'm not sure I will do Wistia. Uh, uh, for now, it's Vimeo and YouTube because it has some features which are not available, like uh, for video can build a, um, uh, like chat chapters and direct links like a table of content for your video and that needs to talk to the video player and this has been developed for YouTube and Vimeo. Um, uh, so Wistia at the moment is not uh, on the plan. Um, Alexei, do I need to add a video structure data to my page if I only have YouTube videos on my page? Absolutely, yes. That's exactly what it's for. Um, a video uh, from YouTube, embedded from YouTube or Vimeo is just a video as well. There's um, the, the structure data, the video structure data uh, definition has a link as a, an option for the player URL. And that's absolutely what you should be uh, doing. Uh, the main and the second question is the main content article is quite old, but new comments appear very often under the article, something like question and answer. Should I remove this page from the sitemap? Um, I have no opinion on that, but I would think um, no real, no, like I would say back, backed opinion, but the general opinion on user generated content is that it has much less value than uh, the main content article. So yeah, I, I would, it really depends if the article itself is uh, uh, is uh, still valuable and up to date. And uh, like I said, evergreen, is it, is it um, relevant today or not? If it is, then leave it in the sitemap. If it's not, it's not the comments that are going to make it uh, relevant really. Okay, does it make sense to use, Alex said, is meant to use hashtags in open graph and Twitter cards? Uh, I have no idea, I wouldn't think so, but uh, no, I would say no, uh, but it wouldn't hurt either. It's, um, it, it, it's fine. It's, the main goal of open graph and Twitter cards is that that will change how things are displayed when the content is shared on uh, social networks. So if you want to have an, um, uh, dash Joomla displayed, then you can do dash Joomla displayed, but I don't think it's going to be an actual hashtag. That would need confirmation. I'm, I'm not sure about that. 
uh, Karen, does Google compare title tags within the site? I have been writing title tags for a custom home builder. After a while, it becomes difficult not to repeat words or phrases. It is harmful if there are duplicate title tags on different menu items. Okay, so you're, you're talking about, uh, I'm not sure if you're talking about the page title or the title attribute on a link because you're mentioning uh, menu items. Um, oh, I, the way I would, I would respond to that is that your menu page titles. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, the titles should be different. Like it's supposed to be, the title is supposed to be describing what's in the page. So if two pages have the same title, then they have the same content and, and there shouldn't be two pages. So yeah, I know it's hard. And that's why I, you know, I said that somewhere in the, in, in the talk, it's, it's really hard to write, um, uh, good page titles and, 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 uh, um, my, my only advice could be to really look at the page content and describe what's on the page content. And sometimes it's about, it's probably about the same. Yeah. If there's no, no much difference, but you have to be creative there or just leave it to Google. Uh, Alexei say, uh, when I added AMP pages to my site, I noticed that after a while, Google almost, uh, completely replaced my regular pages with AMP for my mobile search results. Yeah, but that's exactly the, the so the thing with to understand with AMP is that uh, the AMP pages do not replace your content. What's ranked and what's used is still your mobile page. It's only the AMP page is only dis, used to display uh, your regular page, mobile page to when somebody search on on Google's so or Twitter or LinkedIn. So it doesn't uh, it doesn't change at all. Uh, that your mobile page is still what's used for ranking. Uh, having an AMP page doesn't change that. But if you go to the, um, uh, if you go to the, with a phone to search something on Google, then it will display the AMP version if there is one. So that's what's happening, but it's, it's not replacing uh, your mobile search results uh, in the search results. That's, that's what important. So yeah, that's, that's it. Andrew. Okay. Uh, how important is the semantic structure of the page HTML? Um, I had a slide on that. Um, contrary to popular belief and from everything I've, I, I spent a lot of time reading and listening to uh, the Google's, Google and Bing people. Um, it's not really important. It helps, uh, it helps them understand things, but it's not really important. Yeah, for SEO purpose. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. And for accessibility, however, it's really useful to be able to um, break down a, a piece of content with uh, a proper structure because that, that helps a lot navigating through the content. But for SEO, a pure SEO uh, purpose, it doesn't help really. Uh, and the main reason is that, it, it and it happens a lot with SEO, is that most people don't get that right. Uh, most content doesn't have a proper semantic structure. So for them, that's what they say. It's really hard to rely on, a, on the semantic structure of the page because there are so few pages that are actually you know, good at that. So it's not something they, they would spend a lot of energy using because there are so few pages with a proper semantic structure that uh, it's not really important. So they always answer, John Mueller, always, he, this question comes up quite regularly and he always answers the same. Oh, if you do, it's, it's great because it's great for us and it's great for accessibility and that has many benefits. Um, but then at the same time, he, say, uh, he says, uh, no, it's fine if you don't have that. It's, it's, you know, it's fine. It's very fine. So you never know, but it doesn't sound like it's so important. Uh, and what about optimizing uh, for content not in Joomla articles? Uh, on my site, most of the content is not in Joomla articles. And what, what type of content would that be? If you can complement. I'm not sure what, uh, like, um, if you mean, uh, products like on an e-commerce site or things like that. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same. There's no difference. I, I didn't say anything about content as Joomla articles, really. Nothing I said was, uh, uh, a blog, LMS, okay. So a blog is just articles, it's just content. Uh, 
having a page builder is about how the page uh, content look. It's no different. It's just text written on something. So however yes. you create the content doesn't matter. And uh, a learning management system, yeah, easy blog, easy social. Oh, okay, let me ask the difference. So easy blog or page builder to build a page content. Uh, in the end, it's just text written on a topic. So that's fine. Easy social might be different because there you, you might wonder what sort of uh, content with an SEO value you have in easy social, like, um, uh, you know, uh, having, um, I don't know, uh, uh, people sharing their holiday pictures. Uh, that's not something that's going to rank in search results. That is sort of just an example. Of, obviously, you have to uh, make it your own, but that will be the general answer. And Karen, yeah. the yeah. I've got a question, Yannick. Okay. Uh, it appears that I can't actually type in as I'm the host. Uh, so I have to ask. <laughs> okay. Um, it's an area that I know you know a bit about. I have a very big website which has a very full calendar, uh, probably between four to ten events a day. Should I be looking at the calendar entries being being the ranking one, or should I be continuing my policy of having a major news item for the events? So that would be a Jumla article, so that the the event is found two ways, either from the calendar or from the article. So obviously there should be only one. That, that's the first thing, and you should canonicalize one from one to the other. Um, and then I would say it depends on the kind of content you write. So if your calendar item has uh, the same text and image and whatever features you have to, on your articles, if you have that also on your article on your calendar items, uh, then your calendar items can be the single source of truth because yes, maybe your they, calendar they, item, the calendar, yeah, maybe your calendar basically time yeah, go ahead, and date. Go ahead. The calendar items uh, are basically time and date, and the news items are, are basically about the item. The okay, event. so it, it's uh, again, usually it's a matter of time and how you spend your time. I would say that if you're using a calendar uh, extension of some kind and you, you have a proper one, then it will output structured data. So I would definitely say the important thing here is to have just one item. Uh, and you can have two, but you need to canonicalize your, your, the one you, you want to prefer, and then you have proper structured data for the, uh, for the calendar, for the item, and that might be easier in the calendar extension, or that might be easier in your articles. And the other thing is, I would, say, I would suggest that you don't have, you, you don't have a, to have an absolute rule. You can have both, you know. But the, again, the thing is, whenever you promote that event, for example, on social networks, you promote only one thing. Yes. So if you so that, if you I, go for articles, you promote one thing, not um, yeah. And if you prom still have the calendar items, because the calendar items make sense, because people can maybe can subscribe with RSS feeds or whatever, and you have an article, then you can initialize that to 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 the article. Because the thing is with um, calendars, it depends on how it's organized. But with calendars, if you have a view which is just like a calendar view with next month and so on, mm. then it can be very difficult to for search engines to to keep you know following that because it's like you know, okay. So that's where the sitemaps. The sitemap can be useful as well because you can list your events from the calendar in the sitemap, but not list the monthly, the month page or the year page or whatever. You can actually, um, okay, you don't want to no index them uh, because that's going to block, you know, the yeah. um, that. But uh, it also depends on the URL. Can you can you have an expression that blocks the categories but not the events? So it's it's only details. But um, yeah, it's a matter of having one thing and put events, uh, structured data, structured data, events, that's really it. Okay, yeah. I'm basically doing it right, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, Karen, uh, is the content in a page builder such as SP page builder? I think I replied to that earlier. It's, uh, it doesn't matter how you, how you do the content. It's just whether it's Joomla content or um, written with the page builder, it's going to be, um, it's going to be uh, content. Yeah. At that point, Yannick, I think we have to say thank you very much.
You're welcome. Um, yeah, it's just about time. Yeah. Um, I know uh, I volunteered to uh, to host this one because I wanted to hear uh -huh. this one specific, specifically, so I'm glad I did. Um, judging by the feedback and the comments, um, everybody yeah. seems to have um, enjoyed it. And don't forget that there are video, the videos of these will be available afterwards. So if you didn't get all the notes to the links that Yannick mentioned, you'll be able to get those in the videos. And when you tell somebody that you were at a really good session on SEO, you can tell them all about it. Okay. Uh, I'd like to add one thing. Um, yeah. So we have a booth in the expo session and because of time difference i might not be along i might be might not be there for too much longer but at any time if I, if you see me there you can uh, i i understand you can go to our booth uh weebler and you can ping me and we can chat uh, i can show you around for the four seo uh, extension that we released last year uh that sort of thing you know um, again i may not be there for very much much longer but at least a few hours uh, for sure. Oh no, actually I have to moderate the session now. So, <laughs> so you got 15 I believe the next session yeah. starts at uh, half past the hour. Yeah, that's it. Um, that's I'm correct. not going to say which hour because everybody's on different time zones. Um, yeah. so thank, thank you very much and I'm going to You're hit welcome. the end button.